When you're working with acids, knowledge is power. I'm going to go over nine myths and warnings about chemical peels so that when you are ready to take the leap to amazing skin, you'll be 100% prepared. One. Now this first one is more of a warning. There's a common misconception that a percentage in one acid is equal to the same percentage in another acid. This could not be further from the truth and is very dangerous if you follow it. Each acid has its own properties, irritation, and penetration associated with it. For example, 30% TCA is extremely, extremely strong. It will penetrate very deeply into the skin's layers, down into the dermis, can cause extreme irritation, and will cause excessive flaking in the skin. While a 30% glycolic acid is very weak in comparison, it can only penetrate into the outermost stratum corneum and will barely cause irritation and only superficial flaking in the skin. Now, I'm gonna give you an approximate breakdown of strengths between the acids so you can have an idea of how they progress. Now, this is obviously subject to interpretation. I'm just trying to show you close acid strengths and irritation and how the percentages are all over the place with the different acids. Now, I'm gonna go from weakest to strongest and our mildest peel is our 3% salicylic acid. Then we're gonna move on to the 50% lactic, the mandelic and azelaic 22%, glycolic 30%, mandelic 40, and then TCA 7% at one or maybe two layers. Now we bump up to a 50% glycolic and a 15% salicylic and a 13% TCA at one layer. Now 25% salicylic, 70% glycolic, 13% TCA at three to five layers, Jesner's, 20% TCA at one to two layers, the progressive peel, and then 30% TCA. So now that you can see that it doesn't matter what percentage it is, it doesn't matter what acid it is, they are all different. They all fall on the scale differently. You need to know which acid to choose for whichever issues you're dealing with. Always start at the lowest percentage and then work your way up from there. Okay, two. This next one is a myth. Now, it's a common misconception that those with darker skin cannot do a chemical peel. This is not correct at all. Yes, they are more prone to run into PIH, or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, than their lighter skin counterparts, but with proper skin preparation, we can bring that level down to normal. In truth, anyone can experience PIH, doesn't matter how light your skin is or if you've done 50 peels and never dealt with it before. That 51st peel, you could be looking at splotchy pigmentation on your face. It happens and is always one of the warnings of performing a chemical peel. When an irritating or strong substance is applied to the skin, your skin responds with an ouch. It gets inflamed. When the inflammation dies down, you're left with areas that have darkened. You'll see this happen when someone gets a pimple. It swells, and when the inflammation goes away, you have PIH left. This is not a scar, by the way. It's post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. How can we avoid or greatly lessen the chances of getting PIH? The best thing you can do is have healthy skin. Use antioxidants, vitamin A, such as retinol, and SPF every day. Now, prior to performing a peel, you need to start using a melanin inhibitor to slow down the production in your skin. Alpha arbutin is an excellent such ingredient, and we recommend that two times per day by using our Fade Bright Lightning Gel. Now prepare your skin for a minimum of two weeks and preferably four weeks if you're prone to dealing with pigmentation or have very dark skin. Now, will this guarantee that you don't get PAH? No, but it will greatly lessen your chances. For reference, other common melanin inhibitors are 
kojic acid, vitamin C, hydroquinone, bearberry, licorice root, azelaic acid, and other hydroxy acids. You'll find several of these in our Fade Bright Serum. Three, myth, chemical peels hurt. Why this is a myth is because everyone's pain tolerance is completely different. If you take a 30% glycolic acid peel and apply it to three different people, you're going to get three different comments. One will think it burns. The next will feel a light tingling, and the last person will think that was just water. So how can we state a specific acid will be irritating and even hurt? Well, we can't. In general though, some acids are more irritating than others. Salicylic is definitely an acid with a bite. When you apply it, you can feel a sharp tingling or burning. It will last for a few minutes, and then when you rinse with cold water, it will dissipate. Keep rinsing until the irritation is completely gone and the acid is diluted. Now, TCA is very mild, but since it's layerable, the irritation can go up quickly. A one layer, 13%, apply it one time, is actually quite mild, with some light tingling that goes away after a few minutes when it neutralizes itself. Now, add on your layers. Let's say you're working up to three layers. You applied your first layer, waited five minutes. Now you applied your second layer, waited five minutes or so. By the time you get to that third layer, your skin is most likely quite hot feeling. Dr. Fulton described it as hot peppers, and I think that rings very true. It may take longer than five minutes for that feeling to subside. I've waited up to 15 minutes before applying the next layer myself for the irritation to go away. There's no need to suffer. Now glycolic isn't too bad at all, and lactic is very mild. Same with mandelic. They're all pretty comfortable to most people. Now remember this if you're super sensitive, but still want to do peels. You can use a topical numbing cream prior to your peel. Now apply it according to the directions because some want clean skin, others don't. When your skin is numb, wash your face well, prep according to your peel manual, and then apply the peel. You shouldn't feel any irritation at all. Now any of the cane products are good for this. Lidocaine and Prilocaine are two popular ones that can be bought over the counter that will work excellent to get rid of that pain for you. Now four is a myth. You only need to do one peel to get great results. The old one and done. Boy, this could not be further from the truth. Peels are not a one-time event ever. You'll need to begin with a peel series. Now that's a grouping of six to eight peels performed at specific distance from one another. With lighter acids like mandelic or glycolic, you could potentially do a peel one time every week. But with higher percentages or stronger acids, you may only be able to do a peel one time every other week or even one time per month. Once you've performed your peel series, then take a step back and see if you need to alter your acid or percentage or just continue on performing more peels. Now once you get your skin where you want it to be, you can decide to stop entirely for months at a time or just adjust your peel schedule. This is generally the most common one people like to follow because they don't want their health and the beauty of their skin to slip back to what it was prior to the peel series. So a peel one time per month is a great option to follow. That and make sure you're using the proper products every day to keep your skin looking great, such as retinol or acid serums, cleansers and toners, antioxidants such as vitamin C, exfoliating scrubs and enzymes, all of those will keep your skin looking good. Five, myth. You'll have to hide your face while you're peeling. Now, there is no reason to go into hiding just because you did a chemical peel. In all actuality, for the first two to three days, your skin's gonna look great and feel super smooth. Then around days three to five, you'll notice dryness and maybe some flaking starting at the center of your face, around your nose and mouth, then it will radiate outwards over the next three to five days or so. The flaking can be very minimal and with some extra moisturizer, you're gonna look just fine. Now, if you did a higher strength or a stronger acid, you will get more flaking, but 
it can still be just fine to go to work. Just watch out for powders, as they make the flakes look more pronounced. Basically, the less makeup, the better at this point. Now to speed up the flaking, around day four or five, you can use an enzyme mask to help dissolve some of the dead skin flakes more quickly. You can also use a light scrub like our diamond dermabrasion scrub to remove some of the excess flaking as long as your skin feels normal and good and not sensitive. Now remember to time your flaking with your work schedule. On average, it takes about three to four days before your skin starts to flake. Then it flakes for another three to five days. Try to time your flaking when you have days off. Then when you go back to work, the majority is done coming off and you're looking good. Six, warning. Everyone can have chemical peels done. Now this is just not true. If you've been on Accutane in the past 12 months, then you should forego peels altogether till your doctor has cleared you. Also, if you are prone to keloid scarring or have open wounds on your face or you have an active infection or are otherwise not in good health, you shouldn't perform peels. Being safe is knowing when you need to take a step back. Now, just because you can't apply a chemical peel, that doesn't mean you can't improve your skin. Start using products like retinol or an acid serum or cleanser daily to thin the outermost stratum corneum, get your skin looking smoother. Then, concentrate on antioxidants like vitamin C and use a good SPF of at least 40 to keep your skin protected. Now, once any issues have cleared and you're ready to try a peel, your skin will be prepared properly by following this protocol. Seven myth. Chemical peels cannot improve scars. Now, it is true that the minor hydroxy acids generally can only help with textural issues on the skin and minor PIH, like after a pimple has gone away. These are generally incorrectly referred to as acne scars. But a stronger acid, such as TCA, can definitely help with deeper scarring, specifically indented or ice pick scars that are left behind from inflamed cystic acne on other very large pustules. Now the TCA cross method, which stands for chemical reconstruction of skin scars, is the procedure when a sharp wooden pick saturated with a high percentage of TCA. Now that saturated pick is pushed quite firmly into the indented scar. Once removed, it's gonna frost over inside the hole and just around the rim. Now this isn't painful at all since such a small area is being treated. Now, after about five minutes, the skin can be washed off and then you can repeat that again in five weeks. Now there will be a small scab that forms deep within the scar. You'll see it if you look very close in a mirror, but no one else will notice it, so don't worry, it's just skin colored. Now, as long as that scab is intact, your tissues are regenerating at a super quick rate. So never try to remove it early. Now, the cross method causes the dermis to thicken and the shorter tendrils pulling the skin down to be loosened. This aids in visually lifting the skin to fill in the hole. Now, it will take a few times before there's a really noticeable change when you look in the mirror, but this method works excellent to fill in the holes. Now we suggest the 30% TCA for home use. That one's right here. But if you have that performed in a doctor's office, they will use a higher percentage and this is acceptable because the doctor is performing the treatment. Otherwise, never, ever touch a higher percentage of TCA at home as you will risk creating more new scars on your face. Now we highly, highly recommend you use Supercop 2X on a daily basis to stimulate further tissue regeneration after about day two, and also an application of pure emo oil or another soothing product. Eight, myth. Chemical peels are only for the face. Not true at all. You can use a peel on any part of your body that is not a mucus producing area. The most common areas are the face, back, arms, legs, midsection, hands, and chest. 
Now there are a few things to keep in mind though when you're peeling things other than your face. First is that the skin on your body is many, many times thicker than the skin on your face and neck area. That means it will require a higher percentage and a stronger acid to get results. We generally suggest the TCA 20% for those with medium to dark skin and the TCA 30% for those with light to medium skin for major changes. This includes acne on the back and pigmentation on the arms and legs. If you're just looking to smooth and refine a certain area, generally something like the 70% glycolic can be strong enough. Now, since the skin is thicker, it is also important to note it will take a longer time frame for the skin to start peeling. We find that you can go up to two weeks before seeing any flaking on the body at all, where the face only takes about three to four days. This is why you can only do a peel on the body one time per month. It takes that long to begin the flaking and then another couple of weeks for it to complete. Nine, warning. Chemical peels are perfectly safe. I wanna address the fact that a chemical peel is something that needs to be taken seriously. There are things you need to do. The number one danger is making sure you are actually applying the acid you think you are. You need to make sure you are purchasing a certified peel. That's what we offer here at Platinum Skincare. With all of the peels running rampant on various shopping sites, there are acids available for literal pennies. These are not proper peels formulated in a lab, nor are they guaranteed to be the actual acid, pH level, or percentage that is stated on the makeshift labels that are applied. Do not trust them and run quickly the other way. Now, anyone can have a bad result with a peel. The most important thing to do is prepare your skin properly. If you were to step into a dermatologist's office and ask for a peel, they wouldn't just give you one. They're gonna go over your skin, its condition, your issues, and then put you on a pre-peel regimen to get your skin ready to do a peel. Then you'd be scheduled to come back in a couple weeks to get your peel applied. You need to do the same thing at home. Follow the protocols I have outlined prior. Antioxidants, retinoids or acid serums, and sunblock are the biggies. Also, treat any acne or hyperpigmentation with preventative treatments such as Fade Bright or benzoyl peroxide or salicylic with pimples. Then you can do your peel. As long as you've prepared your skin properly, you'll have a much higher chance of success. Remember though, no matter what you've done to prepare, or how many times you've had a peel, things can still go wrong. But serious complications are very rare with chemical peels, especially when proper protocol has been followed. Risks may include infection, unplanned pigmentation changes, and scarring. Now the big thing to remember with peels, prepare your skin. Make sure you have a quality product. Follow your instruction manual to the T and always ask if you have more questions. You know that we're here to help you Monday through Friday. So give us a call if you want to try to peel but still have questions.